Humanoid robots are a big hype topic at the moment. But can we use them in logistics as well? In today's episode, we're going to dive into the question, which humanoid robots are the best ones for logistics at the moment? So stay with us for this comprehensive overview and enjoy this very special episode. Automation Awakenings, your weekly dose of best practices for logistics automation. Welcome back to another episode of the Automation Awakenings podcast in a very, very special location. But as usually with my partner in crime here, Oliver Zuhovsky. Welcome. Yes, Matthias. Thank you very much. I'm so excited to be here with you in this very special environment in the middle of the jungle. Yeah, jungle or at the beach, actually. Um, we are in Mexico at the Pacifico Ocean, just in the background here. And um, we are taking uh, a little time to do some strategic work as Automation Awakenings. And we also thought we're going to bring all of these good and um, yeah, hot vibes from Mexico to you guys at home. Yes, Matthias. And you know what's also bringing good vibes currently to our industry? Right. That's humanoid robots. Um, <laughs> At least they bring a lot of hype. Absolutely. Um, and let's check today if there is also very good vibes that they bring to real world use cases. Yes. And let's directly kick it off with uh, one of my favorite uh, humanoids at the moment uh, here on the market. We actually spoke about it um, in our last episode. Is Elon Musk actually pushing um, the humanoids industry? And I think yes because with the uh, Tesla Optimus 2 already. Correct. Uh, right. Um, yeah, he's basically starting a revolution uh, with the technology. What do you think? Yeah, I think there's other very mature devices out there that get probably same coverage in terms of uh, marketing and, and exciting uh, excitement, sorry. Um, but uh, for sure, Elon Musk has a big vision for the Optimus uh, fleet. Um, we saw them all dancing, serving mm -hmm. drinks, uh, marching at the We Robots event. But the big question from our point of view is, are these Optimus robots already used in logistics, Oli? Yeah, that's uh, Alan's dream for sure. At the moment, I see it rather in an experimental stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, trying first um, deliveries to the production line um, of boxes usually. Um, a lot of marketing is done here. My personal opinion is that, yeah, these are tryouts and uh, rather preparatory cases, and they are not like already in a productive way, uh, yeah, part of the of the production uh, in at Tesla. Yeah, yeah, that's also my information here. So for sure, Optimus will become a big topic in the next years to come with all of this coverage, with the big vision that Tesla has for this device. But I think at the moment there are more interesting humanoid robots out there that are actually already deployed in real world use cases. Yes, for example, Digit. Very important, yes. Yeah, here um, GXO, um, a global logistics um, yeah, provider, is um, partnering up and is yeah, implementing, testing uh, this device for um, box picking, box transport um, yeah, in their warehouse, actually. And right. it's a very nice design. <laughs> yes, it has very special legs, so to say. Yeah. So, um, go to YouTube, type in Digit, and you're going to find some videos from fairs and customers. Um, another uh, big customer, um, actually, a part of GXO is also um, Amazon. Maybe not the customer, but a testing partner. Let's put it that way. So they are also testing Digit in terms of um, yeah, handling totes, so small plastic boxes um, in their um, yeah, warehouse facilities. And we also have a very interesting and disruptive use case, actually, by the Ford Motor Company. Oh, yes, Matthias, that's a really cool use case. And here Ford is actually going out of their factory and they are trying out something completely new. 
Yeah, they want to use their cars, their vans um, in an autonomous way to drive actually to your home. And then not a human is getting out of this van with your uh, parcel, but there is this uh, humanoid um, going up the stairs, ringing the bell at your home, Matthias. And Crazy. suddenly, <laughs> uh, this guy is standing in front of you uh, with the goods you ordered. Yeah, this feels like um, uh, science fiction uh, yeah. and uh, something that might happen in 50 years. But as uh, history teaches us, sometimes the future is closer than you think. So uh, I cannot believe that at the moment. But it's a very interesting um, approach, actually, and a very bold approach. So kudos to the Ford colleagues here for disrupting their use case and really testing something new. Yes, absolutely. Right. So I think we can take off digit here. Yeah. Um, what else do we have that is already deployed into logistics and is actually used in a real world scenario? Well, when we talk about humanoids, I think we have to mention Boston Dynamics. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They are super well known. And for me, they're really um, pushing this technology in a groundbreaking way, doing also basic research here. And they have a very famous um, humanoid out there, um, which is doing crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it has the perfect name for that. <laughs> it's called Atlas. Yes, exactly. Um, so out of uh, Greek mythology, um, amazing character um, and a amazing humanoid, if you believe the YouTube videos. And I think there is enough coverage to show that it's really quite advanced in terms of technology. It's doing parkour, um, it's dancing, um, it's, it's, it's able to walk icy slopes or snowy slopes, which is the total Champions League actually of of um, of humanoid technology here. But me personally, I haven't heard of any logistics use case so far with Atlas. Me neither. Yeah. Besides the cool videos and, and the dancing and the parkour stuff, uh, I think there is no actual logistics use case this uh, humanoid is performing. So I put it rather in the category um, scientific research and like um, basic fundamental work, yeah. Um, not yet really s uh, seen in a warehouse. Yeah, but with a quite high probability, a lot of the tech that is used in Atlas is then also reused by Boston Dynamics and other devices that are more um, that are closer to the market and are closer to being deployed. And I think we have a very very nice example here that we can also mention. Yes, tell us more, Matthias. And that's the stretch, Boston Dynamics stretch. Um, it's basically a um, device that is unloading containers that carry parcel or cartons. So it's basically replacing humans that usually do this um, at the moment and is um, well equipped with an arm that is um, having a suction device um, at the end of it. And this suction device is used to basically grab the cartons and to move them um, onto a conveyor belt. But we have to note that Stretch is not really having any legs. So it's standing on a, on a skateboard, so to say, on a an, on an mobile robot. Um, and that's why, from my point of view, it's also a big question if this device is still to be seen as a classic humanoid if it's already merging a little bit into the mobile manipulator category that, um, yeah, that Oli is familiar with. Yes, absolutely. I think it's rather a gecko rather than a humanoid with this suction device. And uh, in general, we can say that this is uh, yeah, the end boss of automation yeah, to pick out boxes out of a container, which was um, yeah, somewhere on the sea uh, for several weeks. And then you, you open it up and you find uh, different shaped uh, boxes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's humidity. Yeah, it's difficult to grab them. And Boston Dynamics is promising here a solution that can actually do it. Also with not perfectly in shape uh, boxes. So super use case. A lot of manual labor is inside this process. If we are really able to automate it, that would be 
ja, a complete game changer in the supply chain industry. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, question being, um, again, which like use cases can be covered here. I personally see Stretch more working in a distribution center to distribution center environment. So not really having long term, long haul transports in between where cartons or parcel get damaged or, or wet, um, which is making the whole story a lot more complicated. Um, but there is uh, big uh, players out there that are testing it already in operative usage. And there is DHL here. We have some uh, big e-commerce companies like the Otto Group from Germany, like Avato, who have it out in the field and already uh, testing it um, in real life settings. So, yeah, I think uh, it would be great to grab someone um, from these companies to talk about their lessons learned, their experiences with Stretch. Um, in real life scenarios. Yes, absolutely. So Matthias, are those all robots or is there something else? When I look at the market, I have the feeling we have two players at the moment that are really important. That's for sure Digit. So yeah, as I said, just, just YouTube it or, or Google it. It seems to be really made for the logistics purpose. And we have Stretch which might be a little bit of a hybrid between humanoid and a mobile manipulator, but which is uh, again already deployed into real life use cases and might impact the industry. Um, yeah, almost in terms of a revolution when it comes to uh, parcel handling. Yes, so I think we are ready for our next episode then to dive deeper into actually the use cases that these robots are taking over. So let's do this also from here, from this nice uh, rooftop in Mexico, Matthias. Yeah, um, nothing I can uh, say against that. Let's, uh, let's use it. Let's uh, bring those uh, good vibes, as I said, also into the next episode. Hope you guys will tune in next Monday. See you then. Take care and goodbye. Bye bye. This was another episode of the Automation Awakenings podcast. Visit us at automation-awakenings.com.